I believe that I am not responsible for the meaningfulness or meaninglessness of life, but that I am responsible for what I do with the life I've got. When someone is seeking, said Siddhartha, it happens quite easily that he only sees the thing that he is seeking, that he is unable to find anything, unable to absorb anything, because he is only thinking of the thing he is seeking, because he has a goal, because he is obsessed with his goal. Seeking means to have a goal, but finding means to be free, to be receptive, to have no goal. You, O oh worthy one, are perhaps indeed a seeker. For in striving towards your goal, you do not see many things that are under your nose. I have always believed, and I still believe, that whatever good or bad fortune may come our way, we can always give it meaning and transform it into something of value. It may be important to great thinkers to examine the world, to examine and despise it, but I think it is only important to love the world, not to despise it, not for us to hate each other, but to be able to regard the world and ourselves and all beings with love, admiration, and respect. Most people are like a falling leaf that drifts and turns in the air, flutters and falls to the ground. But a few others are like stars which travel one defined path. No wind reaches them. They have within themselves their guide and path. Every man is more than just himself. He also represents the unique, the very special, and always significant and remarkable point at which the world's phenomena intersect, only once in this way, and never again. That is why every man's story is important, eternal, sacred. That is why every man, as long as he lives and fulfills the will of nature, is wondrous and worthy of consideration. In each individual the spirit has become flesh. In each man the creation suffers. Within each one a redeemer is nailed to the cross. Learn what is to be taken seriously and laugh at the rest. If you hate a person, you hate something in him that is part of yourself. What isn't part of ourselves doesn't disturb us. To hold our tongues when everyone is gossiping, to smile without hostility at people and institutions, to compensate for the shortage of love in the world with more love in small private matters, to be more faithful in our work, to show greater patience, to forgo the cheap revenge obtainable from mockery and criticism. All these are things we can do. There is no reality except the one contained within us. That is why so many people live such an unreal life. They take the images outside of them for reality and never allow the world within to assert itself. Words do not express thoughts very well. They always become a little different immediately after they are expressed. A little distorted. A little foolish. What could I say to you that would be of value, except that perhaps you seek too much, that as a result of your seeking, 
you cannot find. I have been and still am a seeker, but I have ceased to question stars and books. I have begun to listen to the teaching my blood whispers to me. Some of us think holding on makes us strong, but sometimes it is letting go. I began to understand that suffering and disappointments and melancholy are there not to vex us or cheapen us, or deprive us from our dignity, but to mature and transfigure us. Wisdom cannot be imparted. Wisdom that a wise man attempts to impart always sounds like foolishness to someone else. Knowledge can be communicated, but not wisdom. One can find it, live it, do wonders through it, but one cannot communicate and teach it. Oh, love isn't there to make us happy. I believe it exists to show us how much we can endure. Those who are too lazy and comfortable to think for themselves and be their own judges, obey laws. Others sense their own laws within them. Often, it is the most deserving people who cannot help loving those who destroy them. I learned through my body and soul that it was necessary to sin, that I needed lust, that I had to strive for property and experience nausea and the depths of despair in order to learn not to resist them, in order to learn to love the world and no longer compare it with some kind of desired imaginary version of perfection, but to leave it as it is, to love it and be glad to belong to it. Each man had only one genuine vocation, to find the way to himself. His task was to discover his own destiny, not an arbitrary one, and to live it out wholly and resolutely within himself. Everything else was only a would-be existence, an attempt at evasion, a flight back to the ideals of the masses, conformity, and fear of one's own inwardness. It is not for me to judge another man's life. I must judge. I must choose. I must spurn purely for myself. For myself alone. We are sun and moon, dear friend. We are sea and land. It is not our purpose to become each other. It is to recognize each other, to learn to see the other and honor him for what he is, each the other's opposite and complement. Youth ends when egotism does. Maturity begins when one lives for others. Whoever wants music instead of noise, joy instead of pleasure, soul instead of gold, creative work instead of business, passion instead of foolery, finds no home in this trivial world of ours. Trees have always been the most penetrating preachers. I revere them when they live in tribes and families, in forests and groves. And even more, I revere them when they stand alone. They are like lonely persons, not like hermits who have stolen away out of some weakness, but like great solitary men, like Beethoven and Nietzsche, 
In their highest boughs the world rustles, their roots rest in infinity, but they do not lose themselves there. They struggle with all the force of their lives for one thing only, to fulfill themselves according to their own laws, to build up their own form, to represent themselves. Nothing is holier, nothing is more exemplary than a beautiful strong tree. When a tree is cut down and reveals its naked death wound to the sun, one can read its whole history in the luminous inscribed disc of its trunk, in the rings of its years, its scars, all the struggle, all the suffering, all the sickness, all the happiness and prosperity stand truly written. The narrow years and the luxurious years, the attacks within, the storms endured, and every young farm boy knows that the hardest and noblest wood has the narrowest rings, that high on the mountains and in continuing danger, the most indestructible, the strongest, the ideal trees grow. Trees are sanctuary. Whoever knows how to speak to them, whoever knows how to listen to them, can learn the truth. They do not preach learning and precepts. They preach undeterred by particulars, the ancient law of life. A tree says, a kernel is hidden in me, a spark, a thought, I am life from eternal life. The attempt and the risk that the eternal mother took with me is unique. Unique the form and veins of my skin. Unique the smallest play of leaves in my branches and the smallest scar on my bark. I was made the eternal in my smallest special detail. 